Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As promised, I will be going over another reason you can't make it past chapter two. So in the last video, I basically went over the fact that if you can't make it past chapter two, what's probably happened is that you have not explored your idea correctly or you haven't explored it enough or maybe at all. That can be very detrimental and difficult to write a novel based around. There is another reason you can't make it past chapter two that I want to go over today because, I mean, it's talked about a lot in advanced writing courses and advanced writing communities and stuff, but it's not really talked about among new writers because they want to just go all in immediately. This kind of goes along the same vein of not exploring your ideas correctly. So that reason for today is uh, that you haven't fleshed out your characters enough. So I know that everybody in English class likes to talk about analyzing characters. You know, you might have heard of things like motive or heart's desire or their want or their need and stuff. So we're going to go over what all those terms mean. But first I want to do something that might actually help you write better characters quicker. We do this in a very formulaic way. As discussed before, people like to use, you know, the writing process and stuff, which is not bad, but formulas can get in the way of kind of letting the story build itself organically. Does not mean you should not think through it before you begin, but I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. We want to think like writers when we analyze characters. Analyzing characters and things that you like to watch and read can help you write them better too. As soon as you start to analyze the characters, you can better know at least the parts of a good character and media. So right now I want you to think of your favorite character and three reasons why you like them that are not their aesthetic or their ability in battle. That may be a bit tricky for some people, for other people it's surprisingly easy. Now that you've thought about those three reasons, um, we're going to talk about three possible reasons why you might like their character. <laughs> I'll choose a well-known example. So, so I'm going to use Prince Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender as an example first off because I love Prince Zuko. And uh, second because he's not a controversial example. Villains are always my favorite type of people in stories to analyze, but oftentimes I'll get streams of people in the comments section or in the comments on my books and stuff being like, you're not right because that villain isn't as deep as you think they are. So Zuko's a relatively safe choice. And then also he's from a very well-known show. So that's why I'm choosing Zuko. So there are several things that you must know about your character before you begin. This is the minimum. This is what you must know before you begin. So the first thing is that you have to pin down what your character wants, what they want more than anything else in the world. It's pretty easy for Prince Zuko. Uh, he wants to regain his father's honor. Or just, sorry, he wants, he wants to regain his own honor, Zuko does. And so he will do many things in order to get there. Remember, you have to have a reason for them to want a thing, and usually that reason will come in the form of their backstory. I wrote a whole article about this on my book, Writing Avoiding Pitfalls, which you can find. Uh, I'll have a link to it down in the description box. I wrote a whole chapter on how you can use backstory to create an interesting heart's desire, as I call it. That's the thing that they want more than anything else. And the motive is the reason that they want it. So for Zuko, he wants to have his honor back more than anything because he was starved of his father's love as a child and he really wants that just more than anything else. Even if you have a heart's desire, you can't just give it to the character right off the bat. The character will have to grow and change in order to achieve what they want most deep down inside. So Zuko, at the beginning of the show, you'll notice he's bent on capturing the avatar so that he can get his father's love back because he was starved of love as a child and he just really wants his father's love back. By the end of the show, um, and spoilers for a, f a 15 year old show, I guess, um, <laughs> at the end of the show, Zuko's changed a lot. He still wants love and he's gotten love, but he's gotten it from a place that doesn't require him to chase after a man who doesn't want him. So that's what need is. It's called. It's also known as a character arc. If you ever hear English teachers talking about it, character arcs. That's basically the change the character makes throughout the story. And you have to have a change throughout the story. Not all changes are positive. There are plenty of villain fall stories. Not all changes are negative either. Some of them. Some of them are just about the character holding on to a good truth that they've already had for a long time and just keeping that character development. I have a whole arc right here that's that details it. 
credit to that will be down in the description as well. And in order for your character to have that need and for the reader to want them to achieve that need or that character arc, so th these are called the stakes. It's basically what will happen if the character doesn't get what they need slash want. So for Zuko, for Zuko, the stakes, if he goes back to his father, are very high because we know his father is physically abusive and has harmed him in the past. But he goes back anyway because he just wants his father's love so desperately. Those are the stakes. Another stake is that Zuko just won't be happy and <laughs> And if you if you care about a character, you will want them to be happy, and um, that can be achieved in a way I will detail later on. You can develop your stakes in one of two ways. The first is by making the alternative really bad. That happens that happens with Zuko a lot. So first off, if he doesn't get what he needs, he will he will likely be harmed by his father and his sister. And if he doesn't get what he needs, he also won't be happy. Now on the converse. You can also make the situation, if they do achieve their needs, so irresistible that they will want to do that. The alternative is Zuko gets to live a nice life with Uncle Iroh, and Zuko will be happy and won't be so insecure in dealing with that pent-up trauma that he had as, as a child. Those are two ways that you can really spice up your characters because that's the central part of what drives a good story. There are other things that you need to, to make sure of in order that your character does not become, I guess, too heroic. And I know that that sounds weird. I don't like to use the term Mary Sue because it's been misused so much that it's basically become a meaningless term used to refer to any strong female character. How do we avoid the annoying, perfect, know-it-all sort of character? Because there are many examples I could point out. How do we avoid that? There are two things that you need to do. The one, one thing is you need to make sure that they have flaws. So all characters must have flaws, all the good characters anyway. And characters can be a mix of good and bad traits. Here are some negative traits and here are some positive traits. It's gonna fill up the entire screen for a bit. Here's some traits and you should have a mix of those. I would choose at least two to three flaws because if you want your characters to feel like people, uh, you have to give them flaws. People in real life have flaws. For example, I've got a very strong temper, which is also uh, something that Zuko struggles with. And the flaw also must get them into sticky situations in the story. So for Zuko, his flaw of anger causes him to be a jerk to Uncle Iroh, which makes Uncle Iroh not want to help him because he doesn't want to put up with Zuko's shenanigans. And um, another thing that it causes is Zuko to be foolhardy, like in the at the end of book one when he when he tries to capture Aang and he almost froze to death. That's one thing that you need to do. The other thing is you need to make sure there are story obstacles to the character achieving their goal. Too quickly I find that in media, characters will get what they want very quickly and it's strange. It's almost in a way that the world kind of bends around them and it's it's very weird and a ton of readers will notice that when they're reading. You want to make sure there are obstacles, but not but make sure the obstacles aren't contrived and make sense within the larger conflict of your story. And if you want, I can make a video about conflict and how to create an interesting conflict that feels natural in your story. And then finally, you want your characters to feel like real people, because the whole point of this video that I'm making is to teach you how to become invested in your characters, invested in the story you're writing. You want to be able to know your characters inside and out from their secret fear to their crushes to their family to their relationships to their favorite food to their music preferences and stuff like that. Basically what you want to do is you want to interrogate them and I have many questions and I will link those in the description as well that you can use to interrogate your characters. I also have got a great exercise that you can try and that's called monologuing. So basically you could also, in the questions that I'm gonna link down in the description, you could put them onto a document and then just write from the character's point of view in first person, as if you were them. And you may have to listen for a moment to figure out like what exactly they would re respond to each question but it will come, I promise. And it's also a great way to exercise writing in their voice because characters should have unique voices in the prose. That's another thing that you need to do, even if this stuff doesn't appear in your story directly, because I know that it's a ton of questions. 
you knowing that will influence the character's subconscious decisions in the story. So that's all that I really had to say for this video. Um, another thing that I highly recommend, so I made this video and this is kind of a starter guide on how to get invested in your characters, especially if you are a more advanced writer, please read this book. It's called Build Better Characters by Eileen Cook. She is a counselor and approaches character writing from a psychological standpoint. And I kid you not, this book saved Starwalker because I would have never understood how I could fix the huge mess in the first draft had it not been for that book. I was able to monologue and ask the right questions and it was a very helpful book. So please go and read it. But that's all I had to say for this video. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments section and let me know what other writing type videos you would like to see from me. I apologize for no art video on Friday. I will get that done this week. But for now, thank you for watching and God bless you all.